There we go. Hey, Nate. And, okay, got that loaded up. And, ah. Hopefully, this will be a productive night in terms of uh, getting this finished off. I usually, you know, naturally, of course, I'll usually do a... Uh, do uh, two hours for Sunday, but hopefully I will not need all of those uh, two hours just to beat this final episode. Just doing a quick sound check. Unfortunately, it looks like my preview isn't working out that well. Uh, are you hearing the sound effects from the menu okay? Jeez, I'm getting a lot of dropped frames. Ah. Ah. Oh, internet, please work with me. Ah, da -da 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 -da. Okay, all right, it looks like it's stabilizing. The drop frames percentage is going down. Okay. Oh, well then. Let's, uh... Let's see, I think... Yeah, everything seems like... Yeah, El Gato preview and uh, OBS seems to be picking everything up. Alright. Sorry for the wait. Let's get into it. Last episode. The End of Destiny. Let's see if we can get through this with a minimal amount of dying and retries. Hopefully 
that'll do it. Yep. Alright, so we can get through that first phase like a pro. Now, let's see if we can get through this part without a hitch. Get away with a few hits in heavy form. And then avoid the laser blast. <sighs> we attempt to avoid the laser blast. Now we avoid the tail. Attempt, I guess, being the key word here. And then he does that annoying walk on attack. Just berserk for a bit and not have to worry about that aim. Oh heck. I thought I had the timing down, but I guess not. He does a whole bunch of these. And then... I think he does the shark jump thing, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I gotta really get the technique down for dodging that tail attack. It's kind of weirdly ambiguous in a way where it's gonna come down. Because that's how it feels to me. Right now, he does the thing where he uh, tries to hit me with fins. that part is... has enough wiggle room for the heavy form. Okay. And now he's not dead. He's gonna shift and now he's gonna shift into that form that looks like the, uh... how the Guardian final bosses have looked in the first two. much harder to get a beat on him in this form. Which is making it difficult to survive those attacks. No. Okay. So, okay. I managed to do that pretty good for the most part in the first two forms. Just got a get good with the, uh, avoiding that tail, and then really gotta get my aim down for that final form with its, uh, homing shots. Oh, 
Honestly, if I could just deal with those homing shots the most, I'll be golden. Let's see if we can't do this part perfect. Boosting is helping, but it feels good. <sighs> and then you do the lock on, right? Yep, -roo. I gotta let it do that little high-pitched sound while I'm walking on and then I release after. That seems to be the best way to approach the timing of that. And then you disappear and I gotta dodge more of these. You leap out at me. Okay, that's what you do. Okay. Once more from the top. Nail. You know what? I'm not going to use my Berserk right away. I'm going to use that to make things a little bit easier when I start the next uh, phase. I keep thinking I'm gonna be hit by that. Thank goodness it has a generous hitbox. Not 
So you don't just keep doing that, huh? Alright. Or you do. Oh, now you're doing this. Okay. I can work with that. <sighs> oh god, is there more? Thank you, Hassle 2020. Huh, it's actually over. Of course, it can't be the end of a Panzer Dragoon game without without needing to see the end of our companion. Uh, thanks, Nate. I'm glad that didn't take me too many tries. might be a little bit more of a cinematic, but... Hmm. Uh, and of course, they really did make some beautiful art for this game. and that's where uh, or how Abad was found.
<sighs> I do know that there is uh, a little bit more. Like, um, one of the things that I do think is good that I was able to save the final episode for tonight is there, uh, there are some extra scenarios that they, uh, packed in, uh, to Orta. And I think that's pretty cool that they included some extra stuff on top of the, the campaign because I honestly would not be surprised if there would have, most people would have seen some satisfaction in just this, uh, this game, plus, you know, box mode and all that, but there is more. But, yeah. I do think there is more after these credits, but on the other hand, wow, what a way to to end things before cut to credits. Yeah. Okay. And I will say, man, this is really is a beautiful song. Like, I I can see how it kind of feels like a riff on how Saga ended, but at the same time, it does have a little bit of its own feel. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Kind of like almost gives a little bit of a feeling of uh, continuity, as it were. It feels kind of fitting, considering how it's meant to be something that kind of follows on from Saga in so many ways. <laughs> Yeah. Got ourselves a little, uh, a little baby dragon. Huh. Yeah. It really is a shame how, I mean, I, I suppose it kind of fits with the rest of the games with how there really is kind of a bittersweetness, you lose your companion, but in a funny way, this this game, Orta, with that ending, it kind of feels like it really is the most hopeful. Where it's like, yes, your companion is dead, but there is new life. There's new possibilities ahead. And I kind of think that's something Orta in particular, who she mentioned she'd never known anything outside of being in prison. She just spent her whole life being 
kept locked up, kept in uh, kept in storage for the day that she was meant to be unleashed. And now she has a chance to go out into the world and even maybe help uh, help bring uh, a new life within it. So, as I was uh, mentioning as the credits were going by, there's some uh, alternate stuff to this game. Um, there's a Pandora's box feature that uh, uh, in the previous games it was used for showing some extra stuff. And get to that and I'd like to believe she goes back to the tribe. Yeah, so do I. Because it felt like that really was a place where it felt like, you know, she was, you know, actually being welcomed. It's, I mean, they did come back to help her, so you'd hope that's a sign that she does have a place she could call home, a place that, well, besides being a place she can call home, a place that would welcome her. But yeah, uh, in Pandora's box we have all sorts of stuff, like you can look up, uh, uh, I mean, of course there's the box game, which, you know, you can you know, check different conditions for how you want to play, uh, different evolutionary states for your dragon. You can get various bits of lore from the appendix and encyclopedia. Sub-scenarios, though. We have a set of, uh, kind of a little missions set from a different point of view as it says here Imperial Boy, story about Eva an Imperial Youth and let's see, I like how the original Panzer Dragoon is included here but unfortunately is why isn't, yeah like it would have been a thing like, you know, I might as well show where that's located I think it would have been pretty neat if they included both uh, Zvi and the original Panzer Dragoon. Maybe I can understand why they didn't put in Saga, but I mean, still that would have been nice. I, I imagine they could have the space for it, but yeah, like, you can go back and uh, play the entire original Panzer Dragoon. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave that be for now because I've already done that, but like, I think that's cool that they included the original here. I'll admit, it's a bit hard to to play, I think, compared to how refined uh, Orta is, but it's really cool that they included that. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been nice if Zvi was there, too. But, uh, yes, uh, so, sub-scenarios. Let's check this out. So... We have seven episodes of this. The Empire is wrong. Silence, boy. You're no better than the rest of them. You're a murderer. A murderer. My father did research for the Imperial Academy. He was going to a seeker city that night to find some important materials or something. He claimed it was for his research. Get out of my way, Eva. No, wait, Father. I don't know what kind of weapons you guys are making, but they're just for killing people, right? And let's see. Yeah, so, yeah. I think I prefer Zvi's the most myself, but they do both are pretty good. Be sure to take your medicine before going to bed, son. 
I don't give a damn about my medicine. Listen to me. Why don't you ever listen to me? All you ever think about is work. If you leave now, I don't ever want you to come back. That night, my father was killed in battle. The entire fleet that went to investigate the Seeker City was killed by a bioengineered creature of some sort. So, my father went to kill everyone, but got killed instead. How ironic. And that's how I became an orphan. But I'm not sad, I'm not lonely, I'll be fine on my own. A co-worker of my father's, some guy from the academy, gave me this amulet. He said it was a keepsake from my father. Funny, I never would have expected my father to leave me something like this. It wasn't like him. I had to make a decision. I had to choose what I was going to do with myself now that my father was gone. I could e either enter Imperial Military School and join the army someday, or I could just simply leave the Empire. But I knew that I wouldn't have lasted a day out in the desert alone if I left the Empire. We will now begin the entrance exam. Your objective is to pilot your hover pod and land on the designated target. Be sure to follow the arrows and be sure to heed this advice. To maintain your altitude, hold down the rise button. Just look in the direction that you want to go in. If you look in the proper direction, it will be easier to find the right way to go. We wish you all the best of luck. Okay. And so now, we begin the first part of this uh, alternative, alternative uh, scenario. Which is essentially Panzer Dragoon Flappy Bird. <laughs> um, I can't, but I mean, like, it is a thing of, you know, you're trying to control your movement. Hack. Landing on the portrait of the Emperor. That. Oh, <laughs> that just worked out. <sighs> oh. Let's continue. That's from Saga, that music, the, the camp theme. Huh. I didn't realize they were used that. Neat. I was sickly all my life. I was weaker than most other boys my age, and on occasion I would even have severe fits. I rarely even left our house. I never even went to school. And now I'm supposed to join the army? That black medicine. My father always brought it home for me, and he always forced me to drink that horrible stuff every night before going to bed. He always told me that without that medicine, I'd die. I think I only have enough for another 50 days or so. Alright. Base Sodion 2, bioengineered creature, defeat the specified number of enemies with a funky control.
<laughs> well, we seem to be doing decent so far. Do garbage. Huh. And I, I figured these were going to be short, but I didn't remember these being that short. Well, we might be able to blaze through these pretty quick. Yeah, let's continue. I don't need friends. Even among all those students, I am alone. But then again, I never did have any friends, even when I was younger. Nothing's changed. But I'm not lonely. I'm not sad either, because I'm strong. I can survive on my own. Holding shot. Defeat the specified number of enemies. Okay, so now we got... <clears throat> Missile attack. Let's see how that does. Oh yeah, there is a thing in the corner. Seventeen for twenty, that doesn't seem that bad. The only thing is, thinking on this kind of reminds me of um that one point in Saga where we had to use that uh bike floater thing, whatever it was uh called in the the runes of Voodoo. Should have focused my fire on that green duder. Ah, huh, well, I guess that's good enough for the instructor. Huh. Love the art style of the paintings. My friend and I, over the course of the summer, like 20 years ago, drew a giant poster of the series. I still have it hanging in my apartment frame. Wish I could share the image with you. Ah, uh, yeah, that sounds like that'd be cool to see. That's really neat that you managed to make something like that. And yeah, like they they got a nice uh nice uh art style to these little uh interludes. Once the training mission was over, I was just about to relax when suddenly, out of the blue, a giant bioengineered creature came charging at me. It's too late, I can't get out of the way. But, strangely enough, I had survived. One of the older students managed to ram into the creature before it hit me. 
he saved my life. You okay? Y yes, sir. Th thank you very much. You've got potential, kid. You're pretty good. You'll be fighting real battles in no time. Huh? I'm Strade Ramis. My name's Eva Demilko. Demilko. You the son of the famous academy scientist, Letrol Naos Demilko? Yes, sir. I've heard a lot about you. Sorry about your father. But hey, if you ever need anything, just ask. Friends can be hard to come by here. And hopefully I'm pronouncing those names correctly. Hmm. Oh. Hey, what's wrong? I miss my father. I miss him so badly. I want to see him. I want to go home. I just want to go home. I used to wish he would just die. I wanted him out of my life. But now he's gone for good. It's all my fault. I wished him to die. Come on now, don't be ridiculous. Your dad was killed by the dragon, didn't you hear the rumors? Yeah. But isn't the dragon supposed to be a myth? Something they tell kids to scare them? How am I supposed to believe a story like that? Of course it's real. What do you think destroyed the Imperial fleet, huh? Eva, you shouldn't blame yourself. If you're gonna blame anyone for your father's death, blame the Dragon of Destruction and its rider. The Dragon of Destruction... Two weeks have passed since then. All of the senior students were gathered and sent off to battle. A real battle. The higher-ups are claiming that they need more pilots. Everyone is afraid to say why. Our mission is to attack the nest of those biogenetic creatures in the heart of the Arad Desert. We are to infiltrate the nest and retrieve valuable research materials that are necessary for completing our battle plans. While nothing had officially announced, a rumor had begun spreading amongst the senior students. They are saying that the primary target of this mission is none other than the dragon. The legendary dragon of destruction. And the little witch that rides it. And... Heck! If that ain't a visual... Track of Destruction gives me Age of Ashes name style flashbacks. Now I'm stuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, it's one of those things that... This is one of the things that I like about this side scenario of stepping back and looking at it from the perspective of some poor child that's basically forced to go into military service. And you get a view of how the Empire views the Dragon Rider, at least in this specific situation, and how... We've been through Orda's situation, and we know she was basically forced into the position that she was put into. And has basically just been trying to fight for survival while trying to figure out what her place in this world is. And yet we see here this ominous, almost demonic imagery of a shadowy rider on the back of some beast of destruction really is powerful. A living nightmare from the ancient age. Some have even started calling it winged death. People say that it soars through the skies, destroying everything in its path. Some even claim that they heard the beast laughing as its victims plummeted from the sky. A beast of calamity. A harbinger of sorrow. I must find the beast that killed my father. So, 
I snuck aboard the ship that Strade would be flying that day. Eva? Alright, you got me. What the hell are you doing here? You know that you could get in a lot of trouble for stowing away on a combat ship. I know. Look, I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize to me. I'm not the one who's going to be punishing you. I... I just wanted to... No, I needed to see the dragon with my own eyes. <laughs> if you insist. Here, wear this. Wait, this is your armor. I can't take this from you. Look, I'm tough as they come. I hate to say that, but you're a little frail. You'll need it more than me. Just wear it. Fine. Thanks. Hey, Eva. Yeah? You want to fly? Really? You won't get in trouble? Not if you don't tell anyone. All right. Bioengineered creature sighted. All units attack the target. Yes, sir. Think you can handle that, Eva? Of course. So, now here's the setup for Episodion 4. In the Arad Desert, using the small ship, defeat the specified number of enemies. And at least now we're doing better than that cheap oh uh we got something better than that cheap oh hover bike. Hover pod, whatever the correct term was. This creature felt different, different from the ones it battled. Yeah, I guess we would be fighting these people. Well, at least we got a good spotter calling out for us. Right, yeah. Unfortunate thing to think about, but some of the people we might have shot down might have been poor kids pressed into service like Eva. And again, it is also kind of a thing of well, they had orders to shoot us, and it's. there would have been too much choice in the matter. It's kind of another one of those things that should, goes to show just how... just how hard of a world this is. just saying is the fire coming from behind us.
she is. I can't believe we actually saved an Imperial. He might be an Imperial spy. We should kill him before he wakes up. He's just a kid for crying out loud. Are you insane? I'm... alive? He was nearly killed by the dragon. The dragon. I've never seen such speed, such power, and those... arrows of light. I'm too terrified to even think. How could a creature like that exist? But he's got no scars. Don't you think that's a little strange? The other boy riding with him was dead when I found him, though. Oh no. Why am I still alive? I'm the one who deserves to die, not Strade. Everyone. Is everyone else dead too? That dragon. And the rider. Damn you. Damn you back to whatever pit spawned you. You'll pay for this. I swear upon my father's grave that I shall have my revenge. We can't let anyone know where our den is. What if the Empire finds us again? Look, he's waking up. Where am I? And again! More of the... more of some of the old music. That's cool. You're in the Seeker's den. Hey! Please, don't... If anything happens, I'll take care of everything myself. You, what's your name? I'm Emid. I'm Eva. I don't remember. You, you don't remember? I don't know. I'll just keep quiet and wait for a chance to escape. Ah, Chief Damod. Chief. I understand Emid's concern for you. But I must first test whether or not you are worthy enough to be let into our den. Are you prepared to prepare are you prepared to prove yourself, boy? I have no choice. Use the pod to draw water, and be careful not to fall in. The unpurified water contains a deadly bacteria. Fall in and you will die a painful death. Using your pod, retrieve water from the river two times. Oh, and we're back to uh, using this uh, this thing now. Of course it wouldn't be easy. Hmm. Damad mentioned something earlier. There's a creature called the Yondo Worm that lives in the river. It's extremely dangerous, so if you see its head, get out of there. You could just try again on your next pass. I never even got a chance to face the dragon and its rider. I couldn't even make it that far. Game over. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's try that again. Yeah, there's a there's a deadly bacteria you don't fall in. Also, there's the giant fucking worm monster. Huh. So 
just gonna let it dip in for a little bit and then Yeah, I think I got bungled up on the piloting there. Okay, let's try that hopefully just one more time. Looks like the route goes back to the other side of the canyon before... I guess we gotta turn around... Okay. Do -do 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 -do. Don't mind me... Mr. Riverworm! At least we have the goods. There is also something you need, I think, to uh, this aspect of showing how there is. Like, again, it's nice to have the whole perspective thing, seeing more of this world that you would not normally see, because, you know, usually you're the hero who's got to blast through stuff. And Saga was nice in that aspect, but this is kind of a neat little... Almost a, hey, this is something people might actually have to freaking do to survive in this world. Alright, who the frick is shooting at me? Heck! Is that you? Is that you? Okay, well, you're not doing anything now. Oh. Okay, you know what? You can die. You are not a friend of mine. Too much of a trick to avoid those shots. I guess. Could have sworn we got at least some water, but. Eh. Okay, well, at least we got a uh, good half a jar, pot, however you want to call that, of water. We should be able to get the rest.
down. Thank you for not harassing me, flying thingos. What? I guess I did get a bit too low, but... Third time's a charm. Oh, wait, I already did my third time. Point is, we're trying. Not dealing with you. Appreciate the child soldier stories, the forced indoctrination to military service and supporting and believing the Empire. Yeah, it does feel like it fits, uh... It fits the feel of this game. And it is kind of a subject matter that not every piece of media can approach. In a way that feels good. Or not feels good, but not in a way that feels, uh, real. That's fine, Bren. And we've finished the, uh... Hack these things. We finished up the final episode, and now we're doing this little, uh, side story. Nice. Well, you can always uh, catch the uh, the VOD uh, afterwards. Kind of surprised you thought that. I, I always uh, start recording at uh, uh, 11 Eastern on Sunday. Just need to not hack this up. Okay. Well, um, I'm figuring I'll. Uh, the rest of this uh, rec this stream in particular is going to be focusing on these last little bits of uh, Orta. And next time, I'm planning to do uh, I'm planning to do a Panzer Dragoon remake. It'll probably only be one, maybe two sessions. And then I figure I'll uh, I'll just play one little thing for just to kind of uh, lighten up, and then I'll see where where it goes from there. Yeah, like I, I only needed a, a couple of uh, retries, thankfully, on the final boss. Like, I even managed to do it perfectly on my final run without getting hit once. It felt kind of awesome. Like, that was the only S rank on my uh, score uh, thing. How? Wait, 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 wait. No, no, I, I did the thing in the thing. Uh... 
And like you, like you said, as well, the gameplay is kind of hit or miss, but it, it, is, it is neat to have this alternate perspective all the same. Like, I, I wish it was a bit more uh, clear or obvious or easier to kind of get some of this stuff done. But it's still neat. Earthbound on Wii U, they have a good port. Uh, I might have to wait on doing a thing of Earthbound. That is something I might try to do in, at some point in the future, though, because that is kind of one of those classic RPGs that everyone always talks about. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking that um, once I've done like one little interstitial game as a palate cleanser, I am thinking I might go ahead and uh, finally get uh, Pokemon Shield and stream that. What, what am I doing wrong? I know I could get that first thing in and I know for sure I got the water filled up as much as it needs to. And go back up to avoid worm dude. Thanks for, thanks for uh, being around, Azel. Thanks for being here. Okay. Or did I get the water filled up that last time? Because it wasn't flickering. Please. Okay, maybe I did get it wrong. Ah, well, okay. Let's get this. Okay, because, yeah, it looks like the little pot icon needs to be uh, flashing that blue. That's okay. Yeah, because, like, Shield, I figure, would be, would be good, because I recall the, the Pokemon stream uh, for Let's Go Eevee turned out decent. And I've kind of been looking for an excuse to finally get into Shield and... Uh, Update my uh, my Pokemon knowledge to have everything that was uh, involved with that. Yeah, because it's kind of one of those things where. You know, I wasn't entirely sure about it, but it's... I figure... This is gonna be what breaks me. Ah. Uh... Yeah. I'm, I've been thinking about, uh, Earthbound, yeah, and I've been, I've been thinking... Uh, I do, I do actually have on... I think I do. On my uh, my Wii U, I have uh, Earthbound Zero or Beginnings. Yeah, the official name that they chose for it was Earthbound Beginnings for the uh, the English one. I might try that.
Yeah, I'm not sure if I, I would be able to pull that pull pull that off. But that, yeah, that might be a thing that could I, I could do eventually is doing the whole series. But for 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 now, like if uh, assuming I do eventually get to it, I'm I'm not gonna promise anything. That would be a a neato thing. As I know, I know there's people who freaking swear by Earthbound. Like, I've even like looked into a whole bunch of stuff on it. I've listened to some of the music. For for me, the issue I think will just be kind of trying to get used to how it feels. I remember um, when, because I have tried out trying to play through uh, through Earthbound. And I had a bit of a hard time with it because some of the stuff I found kind of difficult, like some of the inventory management, it felt a little wonky at times. I suppose that kind of lends to some of the spirit of it. Okay. We got one bucket down yeah it, it's a funny thing because like I, I have tried to get into earthbound several times. I remember, um, it was one of the Super Nintendo games I got for the 3DS, because, you know, that had the, uh, the, the new 3DS, rather, because that had the support for it. And I tried that, but I don't think, um, I get the feeling that Earthbound is not a game that is very good for portable consumption, at least as far as I felt. It feels like the kind of game that needs you to kind of sit down and, uh... Give it attention. Any water that time? Dang it! I could have sworn it was. I dipped low enough, but I guess not. You are a game playing machine. Heck. Okay. I think part of the thing for this is that it's not a bad a little side objective mission type deal. But man, it's the the camera angle does not make it easy to judge when you've properly got your uh, machine down enough to be getting the water. Now, it's definitely different than most other uh, uh, RPGs you find, that's for sure. I think it's kind of one of those things where, you know, besides the whole um, modern day uh, thing, there is just the whole quirkiness to it. Come on, how is it not low enough?
Let's retry. I can't believe this is giving me more trouble than trying to kill a freaking dragon of the gods. Okay. Now, oh man. Okay, come on, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. We can do, we can do this heck. I managed to get through that one without bashing into the local wildlife. Man, here I was thinking, ah, maybe I only need to retry once. I can freaking breeze through this. No. Nope. Just been thinking, hey, what's the hep hep what's the hardest episode of Panzer Dragoon Saga? Is it is it one where it had like a really pow powerful boss? Was is there like a a gauntlet of uh obstacles that you had to dodge as a dragon weaving in and out boosting and breaking no it's when I had to gather some frickin water Okay, we got it, we got it. I just have to get this one last stupid jug in there.
Okay. Yes. When I returned to the Seeker's Den, they threw a small welcome party in my honor. You did it, boy. I thought you were just a snot-faced little punk, but it looks like I was wrong. Hey, sorry about yesterday. I hope you're not sour about what I said. Now, oh, the name's Nuf. Welcome to our den. Thanks. Here, try some of this. Thank you. The fruit was soft and sweet. It's delicious. Isn't that Zarl fruit? We rarely even get to eat that stuff. That's not fair. Be quiet. If you keep complaining, you'll be eating nothing but kukyo hide from tomorrow on. Got it? Oh, come on. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've seen you laugh yet. Hey. I'll install this ancient engine into your pod. You should be able to fly much faster with this thing now. We Seekers live a nomadic lifestyle, moving from place to place, wherever we can squeeze out a living. But in truth, we're explorers, really. We search the land, trying to find ways to make it inhabitable for people. It leads to a lot of danger and a lot of hardship, but it's our duty. Our primary den is located west of here, in Yellico Valley. Well, it used to be, that is. That's... That's the secret den where my father was killed by the Dragon of Destruction. But the den was attacked by the Empire and everyone was... Oh, I'm sorry, you probably don't want to hear about that. Don't worry about it. I see. I suppose you're one of us now. The den was wiped out by a squadron of the Empire's Dragon Mares. Imperial Dragons? Could it be... Father, what have you done? Yeah, there are new weapons developed by the scientists at the Imperial Academy. A whole group of them attacked. They destroyed the entire city within minutes. Father was creating dragons? I can't believe my father, my very own father, was responsible for bringing more of those things into this world. Why is it that the only things left behind by the ancient age bring only death and destruction to our world? I... I don't know. Was Father nothing but a murderer after all? Oh, wait, I wanted to show you something. A weapon from the ancient age. It was passed down from generation to generation at our den in Yellico Valley. When I was young, my father told me that they found it deep within the ruins there. It looks sort of like this. And you activate it by hitting this part here really hard with a stick. More weapons. A drum? My father also told me that it's supposedly a bomb. Powerful enough to level entire mountains. Of course, whoever uses it would probably be destroyed, along with everything else around him. It was sealed away. Deep within Yellico Valley. I see. But why are you telling me this? Why not? You're one of us now, right? I'm lying to you. Don't trust me. Don't trust me. And I felt something. Almost like it was destiny when I found you out there in the desert. Huh? Destiny? I don't know why, but I sensed within you the power to change things. What's all the commotion about? Oh, no. The dragon was spotted near the snowfields to the north of here. The dragon of destruction. What about the rider? Huh? I think so. What's wrong? I must kill the dragon of destruction. What? I ran. I ran like I had never run before, straight to the pod, and before I knew it, I was flying.
The base of the on Zix. Catch up to the Dragon of Destruction. Don't get hit. And I can't actually target her. Hmm. I think the sound effects are not quite working, or at least the, the gunfire. Just avoid these duders. No. Come on, come on, come on, come on. How oh, heck, just by a hairline. That's too slow. I've got to be quicker than that. If I get hit, it looks like my, my pod will slow down. I have to shoot down the Vaunt Morley and try to dodge all the balls it shoots at me. Okay. I kind of want, like, okay, so I feel like the implication is that uh, this is going in parallel with the uh, the events of the game. And because of that, freaking heck, I'm kind of wondering if the implication is that he's hallucinating Orta? Because we were on foot in this particular section of the game. Will you leave me alone? Because, I mean, it could be that maybe she's traversing back over this area after the confrontation over the water? But I'm not entirely sure. Uh, 
Let's try that again. Now, let's try to do this in a way that we don't heck up. Get me this time. Why? I'm just gonna go ahead and retry because after getting hit that so that many times I don't think I'm gonna catch up. Unfortunately, I'm getting the feeling that the only way I'm going to be able to survive is to get the uh, wildlife to regret being in my path. There was something in her eyes, something almost familiar. I froze. I couldn't pull the trigger. Perhaps she, too, feels alone? Perhaps she understands the loneliness and desolation that I feel? Kind of glad he could feel that at least. I returned to the Seeker's Den. I knew it! I knew you'd change things around here! I'm sorry. I couldn't shoot her. What's wrong? Oh no, not now. My. Medicine. Hold on. Medicine. It's in your pack, right? The one that you had when we found you? Yes. Please make it stop, please. Here, I think this is it. It's the last pill. Here. Swallow it. You're finally awake. I was starting to think you weren't... Never mind, how are you feeling? I'm okay. Gone. They're all gone. And that was the last of my medicine. Next time I just might never wake up. My amulet. 
Father, what am I to do? Hey, that's a letter, right? Uh, who could it be from? Huh? A letter? Yeah, it's a letter container used by tribes out in the frontiers. Here, they can be pretty tricky to open. Sure. A letter from Father. I hope this letter does not come to you under any aberrant circumstances, for... If you are reading this, it means that I am dead. Eva, there is something that I must tell you, but I could never do so face to face. You are carrying a virus. When you were much younger, you drank water from a polluted well. Most people suffer from severe fits, fall into a coma, and die within hours of being exposed to the same virus. But I could not allow it to happen to you. I extracted chemicals from the bodily fluids of a bioengineered creature and created a cure that I tested on you. While it did not cure your illness, it stopped the virus from spreading, and you somehow miraculously survived. However, the medicine I created stopped working after a short period of time. The virus has grown immune to its effects. I began to create new medicines from the fluids of more and more powerful creatures. And after many different medicines, I ran out of options. And there was not a creature in this world from which I could make a medicine to save you. This is what drove me to join in the development of the Dragon Mares. The medicine that you are currently taking is the medicine that I created from the fluids of a dragon mare. Eva. I know how much you despise war. Perhaps you are right. Perhaps the dragon mares have no place in this world, per power such as that could only lead to the destruction of this world. However, I just wanted to be with you for as, as long as fate would allow. Is the medicine still helping? How many pills do you have left? Please don't give up. Don't ever give up. There must be a cure. I am sure of it. You must find it. Now that I am gone. Eva, you are my son. I have faith in you. And please, forgive me. Oh, Father. Father. We're being attacked! Dragon mares? Damn those bastards, are they trying to wipe us out? I can't believe this. Why? My father created the dragon mares. It is my duty to destroy them. Before I knew it, I was jumping into my pod and I was flying after them. Eva, it's beneath the waterfall. Hey, you told him about the weapon? Shut up. Somebody's got to do something or we're all going to die. I'm it. I left for Yellico Valley. The Dragon Marys chased me for a while, but using the power of my new engine, I was able to escape somehow. Hey, that's... Eva? Eva, is that you? Hey, it's me, Marat. Don't you remember? We went to military school together. I can't believe it. It's Eva. Eva, you're alive? Marat. Pio? Yeah, it's me, Bial. We made it into the military, too. Eva, how have you been? Amuz? Yeah. Well, what are you soldiers doing? Shoot him. Have you forgotten your orders? I can't. What did you say? I can't shoot him. I can't shoot him either. What's the meaning of this? Guys. Guys, all of you, leave this place now. Guys.
inescapable fate. Make your way to the area where the ancient weapon is located. So let's come to this. Looks like I pushed the engine too hard. The accelerate isn't working. Collision is an instant death. Nailed it. This the weapon? Holy frick! No, 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 no! Go back, go back, go back, go back! Uh, almost nailed the landing. told me that the Seekers found this spot and marked it with a sign. I better watch for that sign so I don't lose my way. Blech. Here we go. Alright. Steady as she goes. when I hit this threshold.
Come on. Activate the thing. Okay, and what, what, what? Okay. So it wasn't a bomb. It turns out that this legendary weapon was not the weapon of mass destructions that the Seekers believed it to be. It was a sound generator. Soldiers laid down their weapons and fighting stopped, and whether or not the ancients intended to do so, the sounds also seemed to calm the hearts of men. Eva, is something wrong? I'm so tired. Best Eva, rest. I shall watch over you while you sleep. Thank you. I realize that people are stupid. They hate each other, fight each other, and eventually they try to kill each other. But all I could think at the time was that humans created something so beautiful, and I was in awe. A perfect rainbow filling the entire sky, and strata amid all of my precious friends. I'm glad that I came into this world. I'm glad that I met every one of you. the end of Eva's story. A little, uh, slice of what an ordinary, uh, child would have to go through just to survive. Now then, that is, uh, that wound up being the meat, I suppose, of what this, uh, was about. I mean, besides finishing the game. But... I don't think I'm gonna go through the rest of all these missions tonight, but, uh, if this one is what I think it is, I want to give it a try. And that'll be the capstone to this, uh, 
this game. Okay, this is not what I thought it was, though. I think I might just real quick show it off before backing out. I'm... There was one other scenario I remember that I feel like would be a nice, fun capstone to this. Again, and sound seems to not be working entirely as it's meant to be. Might have been quick shooter, it might be what I'm thinking of. The recorded system has been detected in the system, the target will be contained. Now analyzing the unrecorded presence. Right, this is what I wanted to end on. Look at this dumb situation here. Flying Babby Dragon. Yeah, it's Order having fun time with her new dragon buddy. He's a strong Babby. I'm going to finish that level, at least. Yep, yep, finish up that side story and do, do, doing this ridiculousness. Closing it out on uh, a display of what is sure to be a great and fortunate future for Orza and her new friend. Who... Oh. God, he, he... If he's not... If he's not the same mass as her... I imagine has to be smaller. And he is carrying her like a champ. So yeah, future is bright. Even if even even though we haven't found any, we haven't had a game that follows up. Future is bright for 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 Order and her Dargan. Speed chase code twelve confirmed. Act activity index unknown. Properties unknown. Unknown structure confirmed. The target is being sent to the residual. D D D B D D D. So yeah, and that would lead off to the next thing. Yeah, it looks with the wings look like they could barely lift it. Yeah. Uh Science says the baby dragon should not be able to fly, but the baby dragon does not care. But yeah, that is um You know what? Maybe just for fun, I'm not going to play all the way through it, but I will show you it uh, loading in the original Panzer Dragoon. Because, I mean, hey, after all, that's where we're going to be leading into next time anyway. Yeah. 
And uh, as you can see, the, the aspect ratio is stretched out to match how it is, but... Yeah, so I'm just gonna cut through those cutscenes real quick and just show this bit. Yeah. Oh! Oh man, this is just super chunky. Probably should have set the controls to normal, but hey, I'm not gonna be doing this for long. But yeah. This is uh this is where this is where where we'll be uh letting off with uh with uh, with Panzer Dragoon or to... We've we've seen the main story to its end. We got to see the story of uh one uh one child in the middle of this world and uh a nice goofy thing and a sign of things to come. When next time, after we've come full circle on uh, my personal journey back to Orda, we're going to follow this, game, this series back to its roots with remake of the first game. So yeah, in the meantime, good night and thank you very much, you guys, for uh, hanging out and watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.